Hiya. Hello, hello. Hello. Hello from me, hello from her. Um, as in Lisa and Joy, we are coming to you. She's Lisa. <laughs> right <laughs> way around today. today. Right way around today. Lisa and Joy. That's it. Um, and this is episode 11. It isn't. It is. Oh, wow. It is of the, of the YouTube version of the ah. TIK Live podcast. So you're very welcome. If you are here and if you're watching us on YouTube, um, please, if you want to comment, just make sure that you're signed in to your Google account because uh, YouTube won't allow you to chat no. with us otherwise, which is no, no fun at all. Um, hi, Ankeles. How are you doing? Um, so we, we have loads to get through today. Um, but just in case it's your first time here, what do we usually do, Joy? Well, she's like, she's having these moments today where she was like, am I here? What is it? Is it? I What's sleep. my name again? I, did, I didn't sleep well last night. Aww, I'm a little yes. tired. Aww. I'm a little tired. Okay. All right. Well, we'll mind Joy. We'll make sure she's okay. Um, what we usually do, Joy. <laughs> what do we do? Well, yes. Where are you joining us from? That's Tell always us. good. Yeah, We'd like we to love know. to hear. We, we love, love to hear. hear where you're from. So um, we already have uh, a lady, Eleanor, from Col- British Columbia in Canada. We've, oh, wow. And we've been chatting to a lot of Canadians uh, we've this had, week. We had a lovely Canadian group yes. this week. And the grocery girls came in. I was, I was a little <laughs> bit starstruck, oh, to say the was, least. She was. And they were just lovely, too. Super. You know the way? Super. Yeah. You don't yeah. know. An absolute Absolutely. delight. A lovely group. So it was uh, Knit Social, who run uh, Knit City Canada. Yeah. So they do a festival in Toronto and in Vancouver and then other events throughout the year and this was yeah. their first time uh, yeah first um, time they paired up with the grocery girls but it's their first time running an overseas retreat an international ah, retreat okay. um, and they came to us with knitting tours and you met them on Easter Monday Monday, Easter Monday. Monday. Um, when they came in for their shop visit and then we did a workshop with them in their hotel Tuesday. on Tuesday morning bright and early um, just an absolutely brilliant bunch they picked up the Mobius method yeah like oh, that brilliant. like that brilliant. super super superstars um, and now they're traveling all over the country yes That's- North, yeah. south, they're going everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they got to Cavan, to Donegal. I'm sure they're hitting up the Iron Islands as well. Galway, yes. they told me. So this is all through um, good uh, partners of ours as well, so Knitting Tours, yeah. um, knittingtours.com, and they run events like that. And we'll be dealing with lots of different tour yeah. groups throughout the summer. Um, so that's part of what we do, and that's been this week, <laughs> the start, how this yep. week started. So it's been a long week already. Yeah, even though it was a short week. Because yeah. it was a bank holiday. Yeah. You're here but it, we're all, all over the place. What day is it? Nobody knows. <laughs> Nobody knows. Uh, but we're delighted to be bringing back, because uh, the last time we did a podcast was at our Stitch Social yes. here, which was great fun. Really, really good. But uh, we hadn't asked for your questions in a little no. while. So that's part of what we do, is you ask TIK, you're burning questions, and, and we do our we best do to answer. We do our best to answer them. We, we do okay, I we think. Do. We do. And then uh, we show off some finished things like that. We're both in Irish artisan yarns, DK Tweed today. Because it is rather lovely. And it is rather freshly renewed on the shelves it as well. Is. So that, that helps. Have a whole basket to show you. Yes. Um, and then we, uh, yeah, we talk about what we're working on and we give you some inspiration. And obviously there's from our customer questions as well. There'll be yep. lovely pattern inspiration coming from that yeah. too. So whether you're watching us live or you're watching the playback, we do ask, please do like and subscribe to our channel and tell us in the comments what do you like about the podcast tell us what you don't like about the podcast tell us what you'd like to see more of well, hopefully there's nothing ah we can take it <laughs> we, we, take our, we take our skins constructive now constructive criticism is always welcome absolutely yes. absolutely 100% Definitely. yes Definitely. you know so there's there's no one right way to do things no no there's not no. <laughs> the amount of times people come in and say to us well what do you recommend which mm. is best you know needle wise anyway is one of the big things yeah. and we're like there's no best it's your best, what yeah. suits you and how you knit, or does it turn out right? Does it not give you a pain? That kind of thing. So there's no one way to yeah. do anything. And same for knitting methods. Yes. Knitting methods. Yes. Is absolutely. There's loads. Yeah. There's been quite a bit of discussion about uh, purling and styles of pearls. And we're yeah. going to do a whole run over of um, the different types of ways that you can achieve a simple pearl stitch, a different simple knit stitch. I know. Not today, but we will, but that's yeah. coming up. Yeah. Um, and, and essentially you get the same thing, so it's about what works for you. Definitely. Uh, so we've got people from uh, Northeast Scotland. Long Island. Valerie, Valerie is calling you a name dropper. 
Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Don't from, be mean, Valerie. You're one of my pals. She's she's being nice, I'm sure. I mean, um, she is. And from Kildare, from County Wicklow, Orlando in Florida, and wow. Oregon. Or, 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 I might have said or, oregano. 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 Mm. Not from oregano. You're from Orlando. <laughs> uh, Thank you for joining us. It's really super to see you. Um, so we will jump right in to. Do you want to talk a little bit about what you've been doing lately, or will I show my progress on my? Show your progress. Show my progress. I have, well, I mean, these are long rows. These are long rows. Um, but the artist shawl oh, is coming I've seen along. a couple of them and they're like, oh, they're so lovely. They are I'm glorious. Um, and it just takes, you know, by the time, my kids are getting older now and they don't go to bed until much later. So by the time they get to bed and by the time I sit down. Oh, look at um, us. I love us. I'm getting just a couple of rows done. Oh, uh, look. And busy times. That but is gorgeous. It is absolutely fantastic. To and work a on. well-written pattern. Oh, uh, yeah, completely. She does, completely, though. So. She does. So this is called Artis, and it's by Moonstruck Knits, Natasha Hornby, mm -hmm. um, and I'm using Lana Vendelay, uh, a chic blend, which is it is fingering leaning mm. slightly into sport. So the pattern yeah. is calling for sport weight, but I'm I'm gone with the lighter weight. Sure, we're going into spring there, and obviously it'll be it's actually yeah. worn that way around. <laughs> but we're just showing showing the progress, and I had to have my stitch. Well, I think the the beauty of a shawl anyway is you know once you match your needle to your yarn, you can play around yeah, and keep going. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so I've just gone into this nice little aqua shade here. Try and get the camera to pick that up. And uh, it's obviously it's going to need a nice healthy backing, but this is all done. Take a look at the wrong side, peoples. Uh, using just one color per row because it's mosaic knitting. Yeah. So she, much do, she does some lovely mosaic knitting patterns. Yeah. I made a cardigan with that she designed and it's just re she really has a lovely eye. She does. And the colors are very inspirational that she mm -hmm. uses as well. Um, but yeah, I, I do love Stranded colour work. This is actually my first mosaic knitting project. Really? Uh, yeah, oh. I've done mosaic before. Um, so I'm enjoying that. Um, these rows here are the section where it's a one by one stranded colour work. Yeah. Um, you do have to then, I would usually hold one yarn in each hand for my knits. Yeah. Um, and then I had to try and do the, the one yarn in each hand for content, like purling across because you got to purl your one by one colour work. Yes, yes, flat yes, piece, yes, yes, right? yes, yes, yes. So I was playing around and playing around, and I ultimately settled on Portuguese pearl as being the way to go. So uh, now I haven't done that. It's fun. I saw somebody do it at uh, one of the stitch socials, ah. and I was just like, oh yeah, like I knew about the technique, but I hadn't. Um, That's not the one used where it's around your neck. Yes. Ah. So you, you carry you tension the yarn around your neck. We'll see if we can sort of talk about it here. We'll just carry some spare yard. Um, <laughs> Look at her lovely hair. She had her hair done I've got today. I got my hair done today. Yes, yeah. um, And you, you, you flick. You sort of flick it as you work across. Okay. Like, so it's kind of keeping the tension there. It's it's funny. I'll have to I'll have to do a proper lit tutorial and everything on it. Yeah. Um, but it's really cool because you just kind of go flick, 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 and then you go working across. Um, and because it's such a long row of knit one, pearl, knit one, pearl, one, or sorry, pearl one, one color, and pearl well, one, it'd be really color. good for that, yeah. So yes, and so there's another long section of that to come up, and I will use the opportunity Do to record film it. I want to see how it's done. Um, like but you don't have it. to wear it around your neck. You can use like at this little Portuguese. Yes, I've seen the knitting pin, like, pins. Yeah. Or you could just use a bulb stitch marker. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, Fun times, more to come on, on that. But yes, yeah, just wanted to show that. And you've been doing a bit of stash busting, but now you're going I have, to- I have, I'm still stash busting. <laughs> Hats and Sophie scarves, and I'm now making myself an Elton. A blue, I needed a blue, like, yes, I needed yeah. a blue Elton. But <laughs> I, it, I find the Elton is just such a lovely cardigan that it's light, uh, it's great for spring and even the summer evenings. Yeah. And Jackie had a blue one which I always loved. So I got her to look at the colors to tell to me. So yeah, so we, we could be twinning here any day now. Always, <laughs> always blue, and forever. Blue girls. <laughs> so, and what else? Um, well, of course, it's that time of year for mm -hmm. the old summer thing. So there may be some shop samples a coming new, up. A new t-shirt maybe? A new t-shirt? New t-shirts. New t-shirts. Yeah, so. we, 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 we live to inspire you all. So For sure. Yeah. We have and a happen to enjoy really knitting nice. along the way. Oh, that's it. <laughs> that's it. It's an excuse. I'm working. That's why I'm sitting here ignoring the, the housework. 
Very good. Ex- no, exactly. How what's that? <laughs> um, the uh, madame, you better tell like the, oh, the yes, world this what's is, your um, winter speech by yeah. Andrea Mowry. And uh, I've, I've said this before, and you're all heard it that I was put off this because it's bottom up. Now bottom yeah. up all in one piece, so it's not that painful. But I I love top down so much. Yeah. But I have to say, once I put it, I was like, oh my god, this thing is gorgeous. Mm. Very simple shaping, but yet it drapes beautifully, and it the lovely little they're afterthought pockets. So but perfect. very well. The, the instructions are brilliant. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I had seen it on a couple of. Girls in the American tour, yeah, uh, last year or the year before, and I just loved it. So, the Irish artisan Scary's yarn is just so beautiful. This is the color is Scary's, scary. um, and then this this colors. one is the Gambit cardigan by Wool and Pine, um, and it was knit by Jackie Sisko. I can see hi in the comments there. It's knit by my mum. I just recently sewed the buttons on, so it's having its first outing, hey, and it's come into just- the shop. Because we've got uh, a new uh, batch of Irish artisan yarn into the shop, so we're going to run through a couple earlier. of colours. Oh, look at the yes. colours. Okay, let's. Oh, I look. mean, oh, look. It just the, 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 and I to knit with. Yeah, I'm sure Jackie would agree. It, it's just lovely to knit with. It's really beautiful yarn. Yes. Um, for something, well, for something like that, you could go for a busier one, but. When there's cables, I'd be inclined to go for something less busy so that your cables show off. Yeah, most so of this is this, this cable detailing here, but it's everything else is fairly plain. But yeah. yeah. But the, I mean, there's apps. I mean, whoops, a daisy. Loose labels. And now. the labels. Where the labels <laughs> gone? I'll start with the multicolor. Yeah. Okay. So this gorgeous specimen is Doolin. So Tara from Irish Arson Yarns names all of her colors after different places uh, in Ireland and um, the basically takes photos and has beautiful inspiration pieces and this involves. one it sort of has these you know it's not that madly colored but there is variegation in there and this one is Ross Nola yeah. Yeah, so you notice I picked Little. a blue she's always with the blue <laughs> um we'll do we'll do a couple more but you can have a look we've got some nice yeah. fresh pictures up on all the on the website there um so it's a dk weight dk tweed it's 85 percent superwash merino and 15 percent donegal nep 212 meters per 100 grams the light is a bit bright on that but then you can see hopefully how it comes out and this one's called donna donna d donna d and this one is really popular this is port new with these lovely purple and blue kind of bits mm really really nice I like that so anyway yeah I like that there's some really nice gorgeous show ones one more just because I'm all about the colours here yeah this pretty look the rainbow look what about it uh, is that it uh, so this is Dun Fanahy Dun Fanahy or backwards there but um, just gorgeous 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 and just last but not least not least uh, that this is knit colourway very which cool. is really gorgeous nice I would yep. it suggests yep. we're a little moody, but you know, <laughs> we'll take it. Moody, moody in a good and way. Teals. Interesting. Yes. Dublin and Teal, yes. Um, okay, so that is this uh, all lovely, lovely uh, full shelves. Uh, probably not for long because this yarn is super popular every time it comes in. Um, and it I did flies see out. Michaela said that she's just received her special St. Patrick's Day yarn all the way over here in Florida. Loved the sweet thank you note from Joy. Lots of oh. love. And, oh, I love with the yarn. That's fantastic. That's good. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, just picked up some Keel IAY to go with St. Patrick's Day IAY. Looks looked oh, very similar. Very cool. Very, very cool. Good. And yes, I sorry, I should have said this is the Gambit cardigan. Um, and we have kits for in a couple of different colorways on the website for the Gambit cardigan. Um, so you can yeah, you just know your size and we'll do the rest. Um, and the little buttons are trying to get these up there. I'll have to take it off, but I don't want to. <laughs> um, but the buttons are available as well through, from the shop. Um, OK, so let us see. What are we going to do? Well, should we ask TIK or we'll show something else that's new? What do you feel like? Well, we do have some couple of restock. Of, this is very quick. Of a unique sock. These lovely self-striping uh, combinations here. Um, so 
they come with two 50 gram cakes in these little boxes that are designed that as you knit them um, everything comes out so they're lovely and matchy matchy and this is their special for uh, 2024 it's the pan inspired by the Pantone colors oh. of the year um, so you can see uh, you can make lovely beautiful knee high socks in those and this is the harmony one which we've had before but just look at it it's just so gorgeous it's like right, right, I'm do not doing the right thing here sorry <laughs> <laughs> anyway <All right. laughs> That's um, love. That's harmony, and then this one is number sixty-eight. Again, they're just so fun. They are. They really they're are great. fun, and not just for socks either. Obviously, yeah. like anything you want, like self-striping. But just bear in mind, if you're going to go for a sweater, you know the the repeat of the stripes are going to come out much thinner than you'll yeah. see them on the socks. So, yeah. but lovely scarves, accessories, There's some really nice self-striping little scarflets as yes. well in there. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so uh, comment away anything you want to know about. Let us know. I did tease. There's a delivery of something new and special, Ooh, and I'm going to show exciting. you that. The girls are. Bit, I'm, I think you're going to get converted. To this with mm. I'll say no more for the moment. But we'll go to some of the pre-submitted questions that we've had yep. um, in the segment that we like to call hashtag ask this is knit <laughs> so thanks that's mm. Anne as fault um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, our first question came from the Nitchen. Love, love the username um, can we suggest the best Irish sweater patterns for Eru yarns okay so yeah. What we have is, uh, unfortunately, currently a little bit of a lack of, of yeah. Irish designers making. When, when I hear Irish sweater, I hear Aaron, right? Or yeah. Traditional. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And sport isn't, it, it really, funny yeah. enough, it isn't something that they design cabled, pat, like something like this in. Mm. So we have a couple of suggestions, but we they're do. not necessarily from Irish. Irish designers that's the the only thing but they would be in the in the tradition of the Aaron style yeah. so yeah. um so the first one that we pulled up was this beautiful sorry oh. joy come come here come here you're out of the way there you go um you don't need to see my mind you don't. Oh, they, stop it stop it. <laughs> uh, so this is called journey and it's by a designer called by the love of knitwear um you can find this pattern on ravelry and it is obviously a, an ode to beautiful diamond uh yeah, motifs it's lovely um I, I really like the long line tunic mm. style and a bit uh, of leggings there a bit of leggings few skinny Ooh. jeans you could wear that over it but it is a sport weight design so it'd be perfect for Eru, would you mind grabbing a skein of yep. Eru so we could show people? So Eru, if you're not familiar, is um, a beautiful artisan Irish yarn, um, completely authentic. All of the fleece comes from the back of sheep reared in Irish uh, fields, um, which is quite a rare thing. Um, and you can see, you can see the colours. Mm, so gorgeous and it's a blend of uh, Romney lamb's wool and blue faced Leicester are the yeah. two fleeces that are in there and uh, we do have the new colours they've been slightly delayed they should be with us we're hoping by mid-April I'm kind of um, excited about that I know there's four new colours coming really soon so keep an eye out for that yeah. and then our second suggestion of patterns you want to spot yes, this one yes um, lovely customer Siobhan who lives in <laughs> Brussels sorry let me move over um Anyway, Siobhan, if you're watching or you're watching afterwards, you came in one time in this gorgeous, it's a Hohe Locatelli uh, pattern and it's called Monstera, but it's just the, the cabling and the crossing, it's just really lovely. I think it'd be gorgeous in that. It would work very nice. Yeah, yeah. it would work really so well. You can see it's um, it's done here in a hand dyed yarn, a sport weight yarn, so you can't, it might be a bit tricky to see the cable in the detail, which yeah. is kind of what you were saying yeah. earlier. Yeah. Um, but in the area, I think it would be absolutely I think fabulous. It would be really lovely. And then we do have two kits on our website. Now, one is more of a lace. Actually, they're both more of lacy. There is a bit of cable yeah. in, in um, Pink Fizz. Um, but here we are. Happy days. So this is... Well, this one is... Fiola. More, yeah. yeah. This is Fiola, F-J-O-L-L-A by Isabel Kramer. Um, and it has beautiful lace detailing down the sleeve here. So you can see that. And then just a little bit of... Um, that being picked out around the neck as well but you can show the beautiful stitch definition of this yarn and then this is pink fizz by andrea maori which does have apart from it's, it is kind of lacy but yet it does have and you can see 
the stitch definition, the crossing of the stitches and everything. Yeah, so it's a really yeah. versatile yarn. It yeah. kind of works for yeah. for lace really or nice. cables or just plain woolly yummy stockinette yeah. stitch. It's all yeah. good. It's all yes. good. Well, you can see oh. in um, Michelle's gloves. Yes. Yes. How, um, she's going to the. She's going to just tear apart the whole area. Just <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Um, it's all right. Yes. You can see the stitch definition here. And it's really lovely. And these are the fishbone mitts. Fishbone mitts, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that it would really work well for cables. And yeah. It. And if you do try any of those sweaters, please let us know. Please send us pictures and and tag us. Tag us as hashtag This Is Knit if you're posting oh, yeah. things on social media or just email us. In. We'd love to see it. Love to yeah. see it. Um, okay. So that was question number one. Question number two is we have to do a wee bit of chat about swatching. <laughs> Always a popular topic here. So. Um, I will not attempt to pronounce the username, but this uh, lovely person said, gauge swatches. Uh, I usually get 8.5 centimeters instead of 10 centimeters. Uh, but when you try a bigger needle, your fabric itself is looking it's too spooks. Okay. So there's a couple of reasons why this might happen. Yes. Well, are you making the swatch big enough? You always, you know, it says 10 by or 10 centimeters by 10 or yeah. four inches by four inches. Um, you don't just do that much. Do uh, well. Yeah. I suppose if it's saying twenty-two stitches is is yeah, what should give do. you ten centimeters, I'd cast on thirty, thirty-two. Yeah. 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 Um, because it's the middle bit you measure, and it does it does make a difference. You would be surprised. Here yeah. is a swatch here. So, say this if it was mm -hmm. like twenty stitches. Yep. You put extra on the width and extra on the length and then measure the bit in the middle when you have blocked yeah, it. Exactly. Um, and you have this frame of garter stitch around to help your swatch yeah. lie flat. Because what will happen is if you just cast on, I'm just using Little standard curl. DK tension, curly, 22, curly. 22 you'd get, everything's going to squeal, yeah. squish in and curl. And then you'll be trying to like lay it out to, to measure. Um, and you'll miss those edge stitches and they'll be wonky and they'll be, you yeah. know, things just won't look quite right. So that could be, that's our first that's one way. guess as what might be happening. And the other thing is, mm. if it's a, um, a sweater that's in the round, you need to swatch in the round. You really do. Yeah. You really yeah. do. We have ones there just to show. These are, they weren't swatched for gauge, they were more swatched for dominance. Yeah. But I did it in the round. So you see, you you have all of these loose. You sort of drag run your it yarn. along the back. Yeah. And then you cut it. So then you're getting a true measure of yeah. what it's going to be in the round because there will be no pearls. Yeah. So sometimes pearls do definitely affect your your gauge. That's it. For a lot of people, they pearl looser than yeah. they knit. Yeah. 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 And in fact, who was it that was telling me? Nancy, actually, one of yeah. our customers, she pearls with a smaller, smaller or bigger needle. Yeah, yeah she yeah, actually, because yeah. she was doing a lot of swatching for work, and um, she has a smaller needle, I think it's a smaller needle for yeah. her pearl side. Always. Yeah. And I was kind of, wow. I've but never when, you, when you know, when you observe your own well, tension and it kind of reliably consistent, that you know is that the that's thing what's too. happening. The more you knit, uh, you know, they told us at school, practice, practice makes perfect. Well, it makes better. Um, yep. You do get to know your own tension and your own way of doing things and what you need to do. Yep. So, yep. yeah, no, that's the only true. thing I can think of, because if your fabric if your fabric is too loose, well, obviously the gauge you need to go down in the needle size, but they're the only things I can think of that would yeah, change. Yeah, I mean, if it's consistently happening across yeah. a lot of it, it might be down to how you're doing the swatch and yeah. how you're measuring it. Um, and what I'd say is we do have um, a page on our website called the Guide to Gauge, and it gives like a cheat sheet on how to how to swatch um, in, I suppose, in the most yeah. reliable way possible. Like we're yeah. not gonna say like, this is the one correct way. Um, and if you want to drop us um, a message uh, through any of the channels and say, I'm the person who asked the question and uh, could you send me the guide yeah. to gauge, then we'll do that. And, yeah. this, and that's an offer out for anybody watching that struggles in the yeah. same way. Um, it's a regular, regular question that we get. So we created yeah. this uh, tutorial on it and a PDF download and, and all that. The other thing is, because um, I'm a tight knitter, so sometimes I do have trouble with the gauge element. Mm. But worry more about this stitch gauge. 
Yes. You can always add rows. Yeah. Or subtract. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe not subtract, actually. <laughs> you can always add rows, but depending on the pattern. Yeah. But the stitch, you can't change the stitches. Yeah. So worry more about that. Um, what yeah, do you think? yeah. And then, but the only, only, only caveat for that is unless you're making a sideways knit sweater. Oh, of some of those. And yeah. then, yeah, that is yeah. quite important. So, yeah, I'm um, just talking about the basic No, basic forever. sweaters. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's more, and people will go, oh, I've got stitch gauge, but I just can't get the row gauge. And they're swatching, they're swatching, swatching. We're like, it's grand because I know. your pattern is generally going to say, okay, do that, then knit this stitch pattern for 10 inches. So yeah. it doesn't, you're going to create as many rows as you need to get to yeah. that length. So yeah. um, definitely just concentrate on that. Now, there's, this is, this is, uh, added in quite a few comments Ooh. so let me see uh, first of all um, Frederick says I will share a lovely cable pattern that I'm currently knitting in Eros blue belt once you've finished would love to see would that love, absolutely really love, love it. to see that um, and I'm sure the guys at Eru would love to see that too <laughs> um, what would be a good substitute for the lab Bienna Merino DK well we have um, the Irish Arts and the Irons DK Tweed if you like the DK Tweed yeah. Black or Drury DK from Townhouse yeah. Yarns. Yeah. Um, I'll answer maybe one or two more questions and I'm sure Joy will get a sample if that's all right. Um, but uh, it depends on your pattern basically as well. So the, some of the similar things that we're talking about, we have some semi solid shades, we have some variegated, we have some more heavily variegated. Um, so, but that's a merino cashmere nylon blend and that's super, super lovely to to work the with as fleece, well, Cynthia. The fleece bin. Or fleece DK, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so uh, we also have, uh, if you're just looking for a solid dyed color, um, West Yorkshire, Yorkshire Spinners, Spinners Fleece DK um, is a good option too. She's gonna go, she's good, great. Just doing the yarn shopping for you, it's great. Um, there we are. Yeah, there's some really nice colors in that. And you yeah. made it, you made the side by side I sweater did, in yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's kind of up there. Still up there. Um, <laughs> Pride of Lace, so that's it's really nice to work with too. Um, Michaela says, I always do a garter stitch border around my swatches. Yeah, yeah it really helps, you it know, does. but you need not just the garter stitch border, but the extra stockinette stitches as well. As well. Um, and then to take, block your swatch, and then take an average measurement in a few different places as well. So measure, you know, 10 centimeters across here, and sorry, this is flopping all over the place, and 10 down here, and 10 down, you know, and then take your average be very scientific about it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, oh, okay. well, that's interesting. When you see, and this is, here we go, there's never one right way for any, for 100% of the people. It's just not, yeah. not going to happen. Yeah. So like what just, like, like what I just said, said. Um, Do extra and the garter stitch border. Yeah. Do extra on either side. Yes. Yeah. So, but you're saying that it can Im impact on your, uh, the vertical gauge. So we were, but we weren't too worried about vertical gauge no, we generally. So, really. but that's no, it is an interesting point. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, uh, S. L. Connor says this explains so <gasps> much. I've had to rip my instant crush twice because I didn't swatch in the round. Ah, okay. Oh, you poor thing. Oh, well, listen. I hope, yeah. I hope you're you're on track now. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Um, Ankeles is going to leave a link to the guide to gauge in. Uh, the description of the video after this live is finished so anybody who's looking for it can grab it from there no bothers thanks Eccles. um ooh. is there a good resource book or otherwise for learning how to design knitting patterns or is it just make loads of things Ooh. There are a couple of books. Um, there's Does Kate Atherley got one? Kate Atherley definitely has one. Um, so if you look up Kate Atherley, she's got, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it, but it's definitely mm. one on designing. Mm. And then there's a classic one, Maggie Rigetti, I think is her name. No, um, sweater knitting pattern design in play in English or something like that. Oh, it's, actually, yeah, I've heard that, of that one. Yeah. Is that ringing a bell? It's on, it's on my yeah. shelf somewhere at home <laughs> that I got. Um, so, yeah, so check those out, I think. Um, but definitely experience, you know, the more that you work other people's patterns and kind of see, I suppose, some pitfalls as well as yeah. good things that they do. You might, yeah. you know, it, it's all experience and it'll all stand to just, you. Somebody there mentioned mm. that not all DKs are the same. Quite no. true. Quite true. Yes. No. Yeah. Definitely not. There we go. You, yeah. You look. You look at the yardage. Mm -hmm. Generally, that's what we would do first. But also, it depends on what is in the yarn. Sometimes, if it's like alpaca, you'd get yeah. more yardage. So it, that doesn't kind of go with it. But yeah. 
definitely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, a cotton DK. DK doesn't like, mean anything. No, it's it's a broad <laughs> category, and yeah. you've got to swatch, and you absolutely have to yeah. substitute by meterage, yeah, not by weight. Yeah. Anytime you're doing that, um, for example, the new yarn from Ten House Yarns that we have for our mini bar and our mini schemes, um, is called Fleet Street DK, and that has it's 100% merino wool, and it has 250 meters in it per 100 grams. The um. The drury. the drury is 212 isn't it yeah. yes as is the Donegal 212 yeah. meters um, so right. if you come in and ask us questions for patterns yeah. you'll always see us calculators, going, calculators <laughs> and working out by the yardage or trying yeah. to get something if you really want to kind of match what's in the pattern um, match the yardage as close as possible yeah you yeah know. You know, no, it's very important. But that's that's why we're here. We're here for the advice, um, mm -hmm. and probably because in the past we've made the mistakes, and then we don't you don't want oh, you yeah. to have to, and we still make the mistakes. True. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Battery Carol, I'm gonna. You're in so much trouble. She says I must try must try swatching sometime. <laughs> you're very bold. Uh, and Cynthia says she's gonna pop, pop in to visit us and take a look at some of the colors as well. Yeah. So yeah. hello in Austin, Texas. Right, yeah. so that was, that's only question number two. So we'll move on to uh, question number three for today. I like this one. And it is, what's the hardest oh. pattern mm -hmm. you all thought you'd never be able to do, but did anyway? Uh, well, Thanks, the Scout well. Shawl is the one that came to mind immediately. Not so much because it was difficult to knit, so much as there's so many. You have so many yarns, and, you know, because it's intarsia as well as yeah. as uh, stranded knitting. So um, yeah, you did quite a bit of yarn management in that. I one, did. So I did. I had it all laid out on my kitchen counter. I was like a kitchen island thingy. And um, it was during, I made that during lockdown, didn't I? It must I think have I made been, it during yeah, lockdown. yeah, lockdown project. So projects. I was really able, oh, do you remember, I, I was I was concentrating on it so hard and I'd made bread and it was in the oven and I forgot about it. Mm. So you but made, I, so that's that's the sketch all by Florence yeah. Billing and I showed you the original. Do you want to see Joy's version? Do you want to see it? You have to come over this way, come over this way. You have to come this way as I show the... There we go. <laughs> da, 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 da. Um, and so, we did it in beautiful Fade Street, yes. one of my favorites. So that's Townhouse Yarns, Fade Street. Um, I'm not sure, like the kits go in and out of stock on the website, yeah. depending on if yeah. the colors are on the shelves here. Yeah. Um, but it is an absolute treasure. And you it were is. talking about getting it framed, weren't you? Well, yeah. maybe eventually. I do wear it, so yeah. yeah uh, no, but it's, to frame it. My it's son is a framer. <laughs> beyond beautiful. It's absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. So I'm Wait till you see her one now. So what I made um, was, uh, well, no, I could make quite a few different things over, over time. Well, yeah. Um, but I suppose the one that I'm quite proud of is goes back to 2009. Look at her. Look at that. Oh, I made beautiful. my wedding shawl. Um, so it, it, it was made, we used to be a Rowan yarn stockist. So it was made from, uh, gosh, yeah, it was Kitzel Case. Um, and, uh, but it, you can't see the picture. It has tots of lots and lots and i mean lots of teeny tiny swarovski crystals the two millimeter ones that i ordered especially two, online two millimeter two oh my millimeter goodness, ones that's... because the yarn is so light yeah and the oh, pattern yeah. wasn't wasn't intended to be beaded um and uh so i had to order these online uh from the states and like they were just like my eyes oh my doing this um but i was <laughs> all of the lines were kind of traced so they had two three two millimeter ones like in this in this sort of little the trailing the decrease lines of the lace yeah and then they ended with a three millimeter which is slightly bigger just mm. slightly bigger there mm. um and i was knitting it and did you do them all with the crochet hook all with all a little that? bit of beading wire folded over yeah oh. and i i must have lost because i uh me and mum were gone over to a trade show in the states that year and i was knitting it on the plane i don't know how many swavskis got left behind <laughs> On, on the floor of the Aer Lingus flight to, uh, to Chicago that time. Um, but yeah, that's, I, I absolutely, I, I adore it. And it's been brought out for, um, for, for christenings and, um, Other weddings. and for sister weddings as well. In case they got cold, I kept going, well, oh, put it on, put it on. It's a family <laughs> so heirloom. It, yeah, I, I completely adore it. I yeah. really do. So, yeah. um, so that's the one I'm most proud of. And I was weaving in the ends the night before the ceremony. So, um, yeah, it took a while. It took a while, but it was it was great. Yeah. Um, so that was that. Thanks for that question. It's lovely. Um, we'll go back to people's comments here for a second. Um, so 
SL O'Connor made the scout shawl was fun once he got the hang yeah. of it. There you go. Once you got Fair yourself to you. organized. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then uh, Liz Sully has got, oh, this, sorry, it's a bit small. I have the scout shawl pattern in a folder on my computer titled Aspirational Knits. I love it. Oh. And you would love to make it Joyce's fab. It really yeah, is. It, it's, it, it's, it's lovely. I, I don't know, even when we had it in the shop here for a while, generally mm. speaking, I don't bring my um, sample knits home because I have so many. <laughs> She's um, just... Eventually I do now. Yeah. You know, I take a fit and I'll bring some home. But that one came home on the six month day. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but we, like, we took a whole oh, morning it, just taking it. photos of oh, that. Oh, it, it was just, yeah, it was just, just I just over. loved it. I just, exactly. and again, yeah. I think too, sometimes what you knit and when you knit it, um, it's a bit like trying, you know, if you're knitting something through on your, something, going mm. through something else. Yeah. I don't generally like those things, no matter what, how good they are. Yeah. But that was, Lot we were coming out of lockdown. It was going into the summer. We were sitting home, really relaxed. Yeah. So it's yeah. I it's look at it memories. now. And I just love it. I yeah. just love it. Yeah. Oh, listen, you yeah. should be so proud. It's absolutely fabulous. Yeah. Um, so thank you for that question. We thought that was really fun and interesting. Mm -hmm. And if they tell us about the, the hardest ones that you've made as well, or the ones that you found that were challenging and that you enjoyed, um, and uh, we'd love to hear it. That's always always good. Um, and this one as well, please do weigh in on because um, Shadows Fly um, said, <laughs> how do you calculate who you make a gift for with the cost of yarn being what it is? Well, we call that knit worthy. Yes. Or if you're a crocheter, it's just worthy. Worthy. <laughs> <laughs> worthy of your time. Craft worthy. Craft worthy you know, sounds good, yeah, right? Yeah. Because yeah. um, it, it, mm. it's not just the cost. Because again, yeah. it can be expensive, but it's your time, and your and if the person you're giving it to it isn't, and it, I mean it's not, they just don't appreciate the time. Yeah. So how do you calculate? I don't know how do you calculate. I um if they yeah. if they know the amount of work and they appreciate a handmade item, and you don't need to go mad spending. You could make a cowl out of you know the cows yeah. we're doing they yeah. you know two balls for a small cow um do you know what yeah. test the waters start yeah. with that yeah and or then the, the sophie scarf you can just do yeah. with a, quite a small amount of yarn but yeah again you know every stitch with love That's so it. is the person you're giving it to worth the love you're putting into it mm, i know and I you know. you do you learn the hard way i i don't try and define it by like or if i suppose if you haven't if this is the first time making something for them, I, I would look and kind of go, OK, well, do they are they a gardener? Do they do carpentry in their spare time? Do they bake sourdough bread? Do they, yeah. you know, do they use their hands? Do they recognize the value of investing your, yes. your time and your effort and your skill yeah. in something? And yeah. if they're and, and there's nothing wrong with being a person who isn't like that, because yeah. not everybody has the patience or not everybody. It's just not into into it in that way. Yeah. Um, but they're less much much less likely to appreciate what you've done so i mean in that case digital gift cards exist for their favorite shop or whatever yeah. you know but like so don't don't weigh on yourself if they're unlikely to really appreciate yeah. it um and then the other thing i was thinking was that you can i'm aware obviously of that like there's a there's a balance in terms of cost and time um but you can get quite a lot of value out of knitting um, with lighter yarns like lace weight, yes. um, you'll have to invest more of your time for sure. So again, there's an evaluation of how, how worth it are they. But if you were, if you're looking to keep a cost of a gift down, yeah, you can do that by putting a little bit more time in by using yeah. lighter yarns or just making them something really airy, <laughs> so with lots of holes in it. Yeah. This is an yeah. option. Um, so let's see what we've got in comments as well. Um, Yes, people who do a craft themselves, thank you, Nick, yeah, are yes. usually reliably oh, yeah. knitworthy. Exactly. Yeah, because so I, they know. A craft or know. a skill, 100%. Um, yeah. And um, Kayla says, I knit for people who I know are going to truly appreciate and love the item. I've also had people ask me to knit something um, specific for them as well. Yes. Um, I've had people ask, but sometimes people ask in a very offhand, actually, you'll make me a thing, you know, yeah. and they're like, you, but you're my window washer or you know like, <laughs> like, I know, they just happen to see you knitting um so you definitely you get that if you're at knitting groups sometimes as well people wandering by going you make me a scarf yeah. um 
so not them <laughs> but, but yes if somebody specifically looks for something no. then definitely babies babies are always oh yes that's yes definitely. 100% definitely. Yeah, no it's just a fact and it doesn't take very long so no um, so uh, I think we're going to come up and give you because uh, I've got something else set up underneath the, the camera that I hope will work um, and this is the reveal of the box this is the reveal <laughs> but then we have to remind me to come back to the last question because that's got to be done underneath the camera as well the demo oh yes the, yes, yeah. yes yes so, yep. um, so uh, we I don't know if uh, not everybody's into, into spinning but I'm a bit into spinning um, and I, it's something that I've gone in and out of over the past yeah. 10, 15, 13, 14 years um, and love dearly. Um, for my 30th birthday, my husband got me a spinning wheel, right? Um, so that, that, that is, that's the way, that's, yeah. that's been the thing. And then at various, you just have a bit more time for it sometimes otherwise. Yeah. Um, so I, something caught my eye and uh, it look, it can be an investment. You can start with a drop spindle 100%. Yep. Um, and you've tried drop spindling as well, haven't you? No, I haven't actually. Oh, there's Maureen. No. Maureen has yeah, tried Maureen it, in case you were telling me about that. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, it's it's kind of a different animal. Yeah. You know, it's good. It is good for yeah, learning for drafting. Um, but I came across these, and they're a wonderful uh, introduction to spinning. They're, uh, they don't cost nothing, <laughs> but they're much more entry level than some of the other options of, of going and investing yeah. in, a, in a big wheel. And space wise, um, they're good too. Wait until you see. Wait so, you see. they're called, um, they're by a company called Dreaming Robots, and they're called the Electric Eel Wheel uh, Nano 2. So, Mark 2 is some, some refinements on their original. Um, they're 3D printed, um, made in the States, uh, I think Morris is, uh, I'll get that wrong, Morris I think is the, the name of the inventor of it, um, and yeah, they've just been on my radar and we um, gave them a shout, and now we have them up on the website, they are available in black and blue, and I'm just going to show you how dinky, and how useful, Ooh, and how nice they are. It's really cool, I have um, to say. So, but yes, in the box, in the box, you get... That's, that is the machine with the shine, it's sorry, too shiny. Um, but you'll get all of these uh, extra spindles. They just screw together, extra um, spindles? Not spindles. Oh my gosh, what are they called? That'll come to me, bobbins. Bobbins. <sighs> so sorry, I couldn't you help. Like, no, you're fine. Um, <laughs> and, and, and this is the little nano this spinner. Is this is the spinner. Um, so I've one set up. Um, it can operate just off a USB power pack, um, and or you can plug it into like your your phone's USB plug. Bobbins, thank you, Debbie. Thank you. Um, so uh, we, there's always someone who's going to come to my rescue. Debbie came to my rescue. Even oh, Bobbins. Thank Bobbins. you, Debbie. Um, so uh, let's see. We will show you this. Okay. No. So dinky, dinky, dinky. Um, under pressure here now. You won't be able to hear me, baby, so you might have to talk. To okay, her. okay. I'll, I'll, I'll give a running commentary. A running commentary. Okay, here she <laughs> is now, and she's... <laughs> <laughs> so it has these little... It's not stick, it doesn't stick very well to very shiny surfaces, but the... the yeah. It's supposed to... Can, you can see there's kind of... What do you, you call those? Like um, suction cups. Suction cups. Suction okay. things on the bottom. But that tiny. And yeah, you can see you just know. how small it is. So there it goes. And now there is the expert. I haven't tried this, but I gather it does take a little bit of getting used to putting in the correct amount of yarn. It does. Now, so it'll spin Z twist and S twist. You'll, mm -hmm. have, to, you'll have to repeat it. It'll go both directions. It'll do Z it'll, twist. Yes, it'll go. It'll do Z twist. For those who know these things, <laughs> it'll do Z twist and S twist. There you go. And you can adjust the dial here for speed. Yeah, can you see yeah. the lovely yarn? But it's really beautiful yarn, actually. The lovely colours. Is that that's the Ashford? That's the Ashford, Ashford. merino silk. Yeah. Merino silk. Oh, only the best. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can take this uh, on their. Um, come back. Do. 
What's great, if you follow Dreaming Robots, their Instagram, the first, I think the third picture that I saw was somebody in a cocktail bar with a whiskey cocktail (laughs) and they brought their spinning wheel with them. So (laughs) it's just, it's ultimately portable. USB Uh, power pack, um, really lightweight. Uh, You get six bobbins. So although they're like a mini size, you can still kind of create quite a lot. I've seen people use them, like even if they have a bigger wheel to just test spin small amounts bring it to craft groups, all of that. So um, it goes both ways, yes. <laughs> Thanks, Jessica. <laughs> so, um, and Frederick says, I shouldn't have seen this. I know, Sorry. I know. That's what we were saying here when, when mm-hmm. Lisa was trying it out. And we're like, I don't know if I need another craft. <laughs> it's as dinky. Um, I am actually, I mean, yeah, I'm a, I'm a little bit obsessed now. And I, we, we were just setting it up today. That's me just literally from start. They have YouTube videos. I mean, yeah. it's not very, very little setup involved. You can be spinning yeah, before you know but, it. But you are very good at these things. I have been trying. I've been trying. But it's like it's as with anything. Dinky. Practice makes better. Go. And patience. And patience. Absolutely. But you can do um, art yarns in them because it's got an, a, like a large enough orifice, is what it's called. And then it has orifice reducer so that you can spin your finer yarns um, you can play around we're going to get a little bit more um, in stock in the coming weeks slash months a bit more fiber um, because yeah. I can see these be popular um, so uh, in terms of pricing they are 185.95 um, and you can choose between a black base model or a blue and then the bobbins come with different uh, different colors three, yeah. I think three different yeah. colors in there so um, so I hope you like that <laughs> I am I am <laughs> fine I'm really excited to have them, um, and it's just—it's just you could take your spinning on holidays. I know. Yeah. It's not like you don't have to have it, your spinning wheel with no. you. No, 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 no. Yeah. So, um, so yes, very, very excited about that. Thank you for indulging me and in my um, my interests there. <laughs> so, um, now, so our last question was uh, from. It's coming up here. Digafni, yes. So have we any recommendations for starting the little wavelet shawl by Emma Vining? Um, Because you're a bit confused by the first couple of lines of the pattern. Um, I did have... This is the pattern. There you go. So it's little wavelet. Um, It's designed for Irish artisan yarns or for using with uh, mini skeins and gradients. the people in the, the Ashling saying always room for another craft. Ashling is falling hard, I think, for these as well. Um, so, um, but what you were wondering about is where does the shawl start? Because I think what we're used to happening is that you end you a lot of shawls begin with just a couple of stitches up here at the very center back neck, and then you. Uh, work a garter stitch tab oh, a lot yeah. of the time um, and then you and work usually outwards it's, usually it's only like you start off with like nine stitches or something yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so but in this case I think it's something like cast on 190 or something mm. is the starting point so I can understand where the confusion might come from um, but essentially what um, the designer there is doing is she's creating like one big long it is it is from the neck down yeah. you can tell that from um that she was talking about the, the color order that she's done it in. Um, and then there's some, a row of yarn overs and knit two together is a little bit just to create that eyelet first. And then she does the pickup that you would usually have um, at the edge of a garter stitch tab. So we'll try and see if I can line this up for you. Um, it's hard when I can't, I can't quite see what I'm doing because the camera's over here. Um, but <laughs> we'll work it out in the meantime, just before that point. Um, my little dinky yes. all of these little yarnados are now sold out but um I production know. will we begin didn't even get any we'll, we will sort that <laughs> the next one sort that with the next one i um, know they're 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 really cool i have they're to very say. cool very cool um so they have a reversible design on them we will be getting them back in hopefully it might be kind of a five to six week lead time on them um they have a little dublin all of our uh the same motif that's on our tote bags um and actually this is neat on the edge and this strap um and is, it just twirls it just twirls is a lovely um leatherette strap nice and soft on the wrist and everything just runs yeah. smoothly as you work so i was using this in a workshop the other day and there was a lot of interest in it so um stay tuned for more of these coming into stock really soon and it fits a full cake it's not like yeah not just a dinky thing the full oh. cake um so 
Oh, I have to get to the other end. Oh no, yeah, okay, we'll pretend that we're at the end here. Uh, so to demonstrate, you help me out and tell me, am I in the, okay. in the shot? When you get to the end, you have a big long round and we didn't cast on 91 stitches or anything yeah. like that, or 190 stitches. Just bring your hands more forward. There you go. There we go. Um, so you're going to pick up three stitches at the end of the row here. Um, yep. I'm not sure they can hear me. I don't know if you can hear. Can they Let me know if you can hear Lisa or will I repeat what she's saying? Just to get around this corner, I'm going to come out uh, with the extra bit of cable. Can't hear. Okay. Uh, she, she's picking up three stitches at the end of that row, but along the side of the garter stitch tab. Well, it's not, more, it's not going to be a tab for this pattern, D. But do you see the way she picked up the three stitches? And then you pull your cable through. Yeah, just to get around the corner, basically. And then turn around. So it's like you're kind of putting a rounded end on your big long 190 stitches. So now you're going to, well, it's, it's garter stitch, isn't it? Or yeah. Is it? yeah. So you're going to knit to the end well, of the row. There, but <laughs> and do the same thing. <laughs> and do the same thing. Uh -huh. So I'll go to the other end and then but what you'll end up with is this little soft curve and the rest of your shawl. It's so you don't out. have a square edge because you're going to come around, I might have to try and explain. You're going to kind of come around that corner just mm. for those three stitches and then come back to the other side. Yeah. Just to make it rounded. <laughs> just to make it rounded. So while I do this, you can let us know if you have any other questions because <laughs> these needles are the wrong size for this yarn. It's very tight. <laughs> um, but that is almost to the end of uh, yes. the episode 11. And we, we will be back for more, but definitely let us know um, what you like to see. I am keep promising um, a demonstration of blending boards. I'm, I'm on a one woman mission to get you all into uh, more fiber crafts, closer to the sheep, basically, every yeah. single one. Yeah. Um, and uh, but we have the weaving. I brought in the little sample of the weaving coaster that I did. Um, so spinning, weaving, oh, yeah. knitting, crochet, oh, multi craft yeah. shawl. Um, this is, is, I actually use it as a little coaster for one of my smaller plants at home in my office. I love um, it. So that was made with the Weave Your Own Irish Tweed kits, which are back in oh, stock yes. too. They, they flew They're out so the cool. door. We had to get them in straight away again. The, the whole <clears throat> beginner, so yeah, basically encouraging you down all the different crazy avenues, <laughs> essentially. But it's a, a flat packed rocket loom so you kind of assemble it all but it can ship like that yep. and you get the pre-wound um shuttles here for weaving your own and then um patterns for uh it'd be a really good introduction it would you know, yeah it is do you it's like cool. doing it or what, yeah. i mean i really think that's cool that's that's it so it's really fun it looks nice under underneath my plants and keeping my, my shelves safe uh debbie stone super excited that i get to visit your shop in june looking forward to meeting you that'd be great one of the team i'm sure one or two or three or four of the team will be here and we'll uh, take well, really definitely be some of, of the team here <laughs> and uh eleanor uh is there a knit night at tik i'll be there in dublin so what we do we're inside in a shopping center here um the paris court shopping center in dublin and we don't have a lot of evening access no. but once a quarter what we do is our stitch social night in partnership with the pepper pot cafe um, lovely food such a yeah, nice mm -hmm. food it is a ticketed event and you can, um, you can get a glass of wine too you can get wine and food mm. and knitting and then we open the shop um and you get to kind of come in and out yeah. and uh, we sometimes have spot prizes sometimes have some discounts and things like that um so once a quarter so we just did our one in march so april may june summer probably june yeah possibly but with the date is just still to be confirmed so yeah. um but hopefully you can uh oh it might be in may we'll see we'll see because it's slightly earlier than hot <laughs> summer time well before um, people start going away yeah exactly years. exactly so i have to check uh check with marion and the pepper pot and then we'll see about yeah. that but keep an eye on the website sign up for the newsletter to make sure that you're advised about that too um i'll just do the other side um so hopefully this yep. is helpful um 
Not now. Yes, You're doing I'm the speak. narrating. I'm going to speak. <laughs> I am going to narrate. So, okay, so she's at the other end other of the row. Here, and I pulled out the cord so that yeah, I could to give yeah, your, get in there, basically. That's it. And then just do three more. Three more stitches at the end of the row. Exaggerating even. And then you turn. And it's, it's, it's a bit like you've increased three stitches at either end. It is. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So you can see this is the curved yeah. end there. And that's the start of the curve in there. And then the shawl will continue to grow out. I hope. I hope that helps, Dee. <laughs> and you can definitely follow up with us if you have any more questions on that. But it is. Yeah. It's one long strip. I definitely I took a good read of the pattern. Um, and you're working from the neck point down. So... Um, fantastic. So Eleanor will definitely be coming one way or another. Um, there are a couple of other knit nights that do happen. There's the Dublin Drunken Knitwits. Yes. Um, there's uh, sometimes there's ones that happen in the IFI cafe, isn't yes. it? Yes. So, yeah. Um, I think that's on a Saturday. Isn't it? It's on a Saturday. Yeah. Saturday, yeah, Saturday. yeah. So then they happen just like on a on a rolling basis as well. So. Yeah. Um, but when you're a little bit closer and you know your dates, just let us know and we'll yeah. we'll see if, if we'll we know see what's around. Exactly. That's happening in the area. Um. So I think that's it for today. Um, be sure to check out any of the products that we mentioned that they will be linked in the description below um, be sure to like and subscribe subscribe to our newsletter so you don't ever miss any of those things that sell out even before we talk about them yeah, yeah. Um, and let, we'll let you know when they come back in stock and don't um, forget whoever said about the Eru pattern yes. we want to see that Bluebell will be really interested in that yeah very much so yeah, very much so yeah. and um, as I say the new colours of Eru just a little bit delayed but they will be with us um, as soon as we can get our hands on them yeah. um, so so thank you so much for everybody and thank you for the great questions we always love to have kind of a few do. few things prepared to talk Make, about and you know it makes us think yeah and like some people say you know oh but you know you can't learn it you know everything no nope. way nope. and not even slightly there's always you know yeah. the customer comes in and they'll say well i do it this way or i have that you know and you're like gosh i never thought of that yeah yeah you know there's yeah. all and be open to learning this just is to be okay. open and I'm, yeah. we're open to learning. That's it. Anything you we ever share, it's because we want to give you choices and yeah. options yeah. and inspiration. And, and we want you to love it as much as we do. Yeah. <laughs> for sure, for sure. So it's a great note. Listen, thank you so much again. And we will see you for uh, episode 12 very, very soon. We'll let you know. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much.